Namo Namaha and welcome back. Now in this segment, let's start uh, looking at the consonants. Uh, and we'll go the same way we did uh, when we were learning how to pronounce the consonants. We'll go through all of the stops and nasals first, row by row, varga by varga. Uh, and then we'll handle the semivowels and then the sibilants and end up with our letter ha. Huh. Uh, we'll also have a couple of special conjunct consonants that occur in Devanagari that we'll look at. And by the way, uh, as we're writing these consonants, keep in mind that they're all going to be coming with an embedded vowel ukara that's built right into the consonant. So when you write the kara, for example, it's both the consonant ik, the k, uh, and the, the vowel uh along with it. Uh, there's no special marker or matra for the uh, it's just already there. Instead, if you want to get rid of the uh, if you want just the consonant without the vowel, you have to use a special marker called a virama. Uh, when you put the virama underneath any consonant, uh, you you, it means you pronounce the consonant without the following a uh, vowel. So if you saw just the k with a virama, it would be just ik. Uh, with no uh after it. Uh, anyway, uh, here we go with the first class of consonants, the velars or the kvarga. The first uh, letter we have is the kkara, which is the unvoiced, unaspirated velar. Uh, how do you make it? First, you make a vertical bar from the top line going all the way down. Second, you're going to make a little circle to the left uh, that starts at the center of your vertical bar that you just made, and then you'll continue your pen to the right to make a curl uh, going downwards. Finally, you make your horizontal top line that you're going to make with every character, and you're finished. You have your kkara. Next, we're going to have the kkara. This is the unvoiced aspirate velar. Um, you actually don't know this yet, but this is actually a combination of two other totally unrelated letters, actually. Rkara and vkara, the, r, the R and the V. Uh, maybe one fun way to remember how to make the k is to think about an RV. I don't know. Uh, so k has four steps. First, you make a kind of curly loop going to the left, uh, which you'll, uh, this is exactly like the r, which you're going to learn later. It looks simple, but it can be a bit tricky when you're first learning it, especially if you have even the tiniest bit of dyslexic tendencies. It's okay, just take your time, you'll get the hang of it eventually. Uh, I've made that mistake many times myself. The idea is to start at the top line, pretend like you're going to make a U that's going to the left, but when you get about halfway down, make a loop and then curl it downwards now to the right. Uh, it's kind of like a bow shape, maybe. Uh, steps two and three are going to now make, uh, you're going to make what you'll learn is the letter W uh, right next to your R that you just made. First, you make a circle. That, that's located about halfway down from the top line. Then you make a vertical bar that touches the circle on the right side. Uh, if, you can, if you prefer, you can make the vertical bar first and then make your loop. That's up to you. Uh, finally, you make a horizontal line that covers both parts of the letter, both the R part and the V part. Uh, now, because there is an ambiguity between K kara and R and V karas, uh, you can do one of two things to sort of uh, make sure that it, it's read as k. Either you take extra care to write the two parts of the consonant very close together, uh, not touching per se, but very close to touching. Uh, or you can sometimes take the bottom of the r and connect it to the bottom of the vertical bar that's found on the v side of the consonant, like you see in this example. Uh, the main thing for now is to learn to recognize the k when you see it. Uh, and like I said, if you think about RVs, maybe you can associate it with k. I don't know. Uh, okay, the next letter is the letter g, the voiced unaspirated velar. Uh, it's much easier to make than your k. Uh, it has three steps. Step one is to make a vertical line that goes only halfway down from your top line. Uh, and then you're going to make a loop or a little curl to the left. Uh, in print, it's just usually shown as a little tiny twist to the left. When you're writing, uh, generally you want to make it into a visible loop. Uh, step, step two then is to make a full vertical line on the right uh, of that 
half line that you've just written. Finish it off now with your horizontal top line and you're done with your g gara. The last of the velar stops is the voiced aspirated velar g. The g gara is made in three steps. Steps Step one is to start on the top line and make a double loop, uh, basically going towards the right. Uh, it's kind of like a backward three, maybe you can imagine. Step two now is going to be to make a vertical line that goes down and touches this backward three that you've drawn uh, about halfway down uh, the, the row. Finally, you make the uh, top line and you're all set. Uh, our velar class nasal is the ngakara. When you learn the retroflexes, you're going to see that this is actually the same as the dakara with a dot. Um, but you haven't learned that yet. The way to make the ng is in three steps. Step one is to make a, start making a tiny vertical line, and then you draw an S, basically. Uh, step two is to make a little dot to the right of the S uh, that you just made. And then step three is to make a horizontal top line, and voila, you have your velar nasal, the ngakara. Let's take a break here. Practice making these consonants a few times, write them about a dozen times each. Uh, recognize, try to recognize them, maybe make some flashcards. Use the, uh, the ubcsanskrit.ca website. And when you're ready, you can come back and we'll turn to the next varga, the next class of consonants, the cha varga, or the palatals. So thanks for watching. Danyavadaha punarmilamaha. <laughs>